Welcome to The Jennifer Sheehan Show. I'm Jennifer. I would love to connect with you. Please go to the jennifershehanshow.com and hit social media. I would love to hear your comments and any questions you have on the show. So today's show is going to be on being saved. Acts 2.21 says, and it shall come to pass that whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. I would love to introduce you to June Hunt from the great June Hunt family, or from the Hunt family. So <laughs> great to have you on the show today. Thank Thanks you. for coming. Pleasure to be with you. Thank you. Thank you. So you have a very amazing story, and I would like to kind of start from the beginning. Hmm. So your story, a, a big part of it is on forgiveness, and I would love to talk to you about your father and kind of towards the beginning of the story. So what type of person was your father? Well, he uh, had a value system of basically, I'm going to do what I want to do. And uh, he had uh, multiple women and uh, multiple families going on at the same time, which is very awkward if you're the daughter uh, within one of those families. Right, uh, and you were number what? We were in the third family. Wow. and. Um, he was a very successful businessman, uh, immensely successful, uh, pretty much self-made, and he was double my mother's age. So with the other wives, or uh, the other women, I need to say, right. uh, it uh, was very uh, challenging. Uh, I, I definitely uh, remember him uh, sometimes coming to our home and, uh, but you just kind of know not to ask a lot of questions. Right. Uh, none of us, uh, there were four of us kids in the same family, a brother and two sisters. And, you know, somehow you know not to talk. Right. I don't ever remember hearing, June, don't tell anyone. But you, I just had what others did not have. I, you know, you go to school and you see different things, whole different configurations of families. But, right. but um, I, I just knew my situation was different, and so therefore I, I did not talk. I was pretty closed uh, down, kind of shut down. But you know how to fill out forms if you're in school. Right. You know your parents' name. Well, I knew uh, that my father wasn't what I was writing down, but I was told how to fill out forms. And um, uh, along the way, you hear what his real name is, and yet it's not like, well, wait a minute, okay, I'm, but I'm filling out forms. Uh, this is my father, this is his occupation. And uh, so uh, listed him as a cattleman. And, you know, and he had right. to be away a lot. Just things, uh, you know, but it, it's so interesting because if you're in a dysfunctional family, not a functional family, but right. a dysfunctional family, that's classic that people don't really talk. You don't see problem solving, healthy problem solving. And so I just walked around. Um, uh, we all walked around with eggshells. Right. And that was my past. I can completely relate. Yeah. And, and, some people don't understand that. It's like, well, well just tell, just, just speak up. Well, no, they're <laughs> right. you, uh, There are consequences if you speak yeah, up. Yeah. Absolutely. What type of father was he? He wasn't the kind that you would sit on his lap. I love the word daddy. You know, when I hear somebody use the word daddy, I just am charmed. But I, that's just not what I had. Right. And so um, it was everything, you know, everything had to be perfect when he would come to our home. Now. There was a point at which his uh, first wife died, and so uh, there. Eventually, we moved into his home for eleven months, and then uh, they, my parents, married. Um, it was real awkward, uh, Jennifer. I I went to a a uh, like a CVS, so it was really a Skillern's drugstore, and I remember walking in, and uh, it was a neighborhood little store and this uh, my parents had married on a Sunday and this is a Monday I was sent to get something from the uh, drugstore right. and I went to the counter and someone said oh 
your parents just, or your, your, your mother married, you're married, yeah, you know, your mother married, and I think, how did this person know? Uh, is that your real father? And I said, yes. And then I had to go to the back of the store, and I thought, that's the wrong answer. That sounds wrong. So I was asked the identical right. question at the back of the store. Was, is that your real father? I said, no. I thought, yeah, now that's the right answer. So then, <laughs> right. And then I left because I'm, I'm just not used to figuring out how to answer any questions. Right. So, you know, you... Very awkward, I'm sure, for uh, you to have to geez. not to know what you can say and what you can't say. And how did your father treat your mother? I knew he loved her in a way because I could see the look in her eyes and she was... She was very tender, very thoughtful, always a giver, and even though this was a very immoral situation. But in other areas, I didn't see anything except tenderness and kindness, and, and yet he would be cruel to her. At, at times he would say things that I, I, I hated him. I hated him, how he treated her. Right. And I, uh, he, but it wasn't just her. He treated many people this way. Right. And I, I couldn't understand how can somebody be cruel and then also to then have all these other women too. Right. And it, uh, it, it was a mess. And when I was 14, I went to mother and I figured out how to take care of the problems in our family. Right, and didn't you say that um, you asked her that question, why did you allow him to treat you this way, and what did she say to you? Well, I didn't actually say that. I just, my, my question to her was, I figured out a way to solve the problems okay. in our family, and uh, I figured out a way to kill Dad, and I'll be okay. I'm 14, at age 18, I'm just going to be in a juvenile detention center, and I'll be out in just four years. Wow. And she said, Honey, I appreciate what you're trying to do, but that really won't be necessary. I thought, shoot, <laughs> I, I had a plan now. now. But you know, I understand that kids can kill their parents. They can right. be so defensive of one parent that they want to eliminate the real problem. Right. Well, we are gonna be right back talking more with June Hunt to see what happened after that and how she was actually able to forgive her father. I have always believed that trust is one of the greatest compliments someone can receive. When our clients trust our team to handle one of their largest financial decisions they'll ever make, we take that very seriously. Having been in the business for over 36 years, I know that trust does not come easily, it has to be earned. Our team is committed to providing the best real estate service possible with the ultimate goal of having a seamless transaction and as little stress as possible. Let us show you why we are the best in the business. God placed on my heart 12 years ago to write a book of my life story. I said, no way. First of all, I don't want my painful past out to the public. Second of all, I'm a horrible speller. And third of all, I don't have the desire or time to write a book. He said, if it inspires one person, is it worth it to you then? I said yes and started writing my book two years ago. My book is the life story of me being born and raised in Southern California to a bipolar alcoholic mother that was married six times. My mother physically and mentally abused me my whole life. Then I joined the United States Army right out of high school. I spent four years in the Army, one year in Iraq, weapons specialist. This book will inspire you. I am so happy to come from where I've come to be where I am today. You can purchase Painful Victories on my website at the jennifersheehanshow.com. It takes a village to raise a kid and change the world. But today, we are more disconnected than ever. Computers and games. On-demand TV. Today, we are isolated behind screens. But our children still have the same problems. No self-esteem, no social skills, and lack of grit. As a teacher, the most difficult challenge we face is to teach kids who see no value in education. Ethos Village is a digital tool that engages kids, parents, and teachers. Giving the group engaging tools to help kids build life skills. 
Ethos Village is designed by teachers for teachers. So we can engage parents and kids in a fun and entertaining environment. And this great curriculum is highlighted by experienced parents, professional athletes, and celebrities that tell the real life stories. Stories of struggle and success that show kids, parents, and teachers the sky's the limit. Visit www.ethosvillage.com. Join the village, Ethos Village. Welcome back to the Jennifer Sheehan Show. We are talking with June Hunt. Okay, June, mm -hmm. so you wanted to kill your father. Mm -hmm. For real? For real. Okay. I had a plan, but... It didn't it work was, out? Well, it was thwarted <laughs> by my mother, and it, she was right. But, right. you know, it, 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 what, what you're not trying to do, or I was not trying to kill him. Right. I wanted to solve a problem. This is the only way I could figure to solve the problem. Right. So it wasn't I wanted to be a murderer, but I did go to a friend. Um, well, I have a friend whose father was a lawyer, and I said, what would happen if a boy, and I described some, you know, and oh, well, he'd just be put in a detention, he'd be put in a detention center, and, but he would be out in four years, so I thought, there's my solution. And right. I was willing to do that for my mother. Wow, she seems like she was such a sweet, kind person, and I, I'm sure that just made you crazy, seeing her go through all of that, right? Mm -hmm. Yes, it, um, I, I really felt, I, tried at least to be her protector. Now, what can children do? They right. really don't have the ability, they can do a little bit, but uh, right. I, it, it, it becomes a role reversal, actually. It's like you're trying to take care of the parent and the parent feels so disempowered, but I also felt disempowered. Right. How old were you when you prayed to receive Christ as your savior? I was a, a junior in high school. Okay. Well, I hadn't been exposed to the Bible. It was stunning, stunning when I saw people who had something. I couldn't figure out what they had. I wanted what they had. Right. But, and I, but it, I just had no idea. It had to do with a life-changing relationship with Jesus Christ. Now, I did actually pray to receive Jesus as my personal Lord and Savior, giving him control of my life. And I started changing in certain ways, but not in the forgiveness area because it couldn't be right. Yeah. It, it wasn't no sense. fair, right? It was not fair. Of course, it wasn't fair for Jesus to hang on the cross. True. But he did so, so that we could be forgiven. Yes. But I had these, I had these mindsets, multiple. That's letting him off the hook. If I were to forgive, because Off now, the hook? Off the hook, yeah, <laughs> there's a hook. If, if you let somebody off the hook, that's being irresponsible, that's being an enabler. It enables them to just continue on doing what's wrong. But I, and I had all these mindsets of forgiveness is um, uh, being a weak, martyr but then I learned it's no it's being strong enough to be Christ-like because even when he was hanging on the cross he said father forgive them they know not what they do and but I didn't understand the heart of, of uh, Christ in that area I, I needed to grow in fact I thought it was stunning when I finally saw a scripture it was Colossians 3.13, and again, I wasn't versed in the Bible. I wasn't used to the Bible at all. And um, I, I read, bear with each other and forgive whatever grievance you have with one another. Forgive as the Lord forgave you. Bear with each other and forgive whatever, whatever. You see, I thought, well, yes, forgiveness is a good thing. It's an ideal but in my situation, it's, it, it, it's not right. So I can see people who struggle with forgiveness. They think, no, that's letting somebody away with 
get away with wrong and, and you're enabling them to continue on and on because my father did not ever ask forgiveness. He never said, I'm wrong. He never said, I'm sorry. So I thought forgiveness was for those who actually said, I I'm am sorry, sorry. I, I was really wrong. I grew up with the same bipolar alcoholic mother that never got in trouble for anything, that never said sorry for anything. So and you understand. Very much so. And I wish to always say, this is not fair. Yes. <laughs> it's yes. not fair. Yeah. <laughs> How come uh -huh. she always gets away with everything and everything she's done, she's never had to pay for it. Mm -hmm. That used to, it, it took me until she passed away two years ago and going to counseling to finally be able to forgive her, but the power of God, not the power of me. And the power of God's word to literally change us inside out is extraordinary but it helps that we know truth because the truth sets us free. That's Absolutely. what Jesus said. And once we start doing what he says, then we find, oh, oh, I was wrong. I and was the wrong. freedom in forgiving is for us, not for them. The freedom of forgiveness. Absolutely. So we are going to be right back and we are going to discuss the freedom in forgiveness. We'll be right back. Today's extraordinary feat. Chris climbs stairs. This may look easy, but with severe back pain, it's impossible. Dr. Stephen Courtney and his team at Advanced Spine Center offer exceptional orthopedic care for neck and back pain. For more information on the latest advancements in minimally invasive spine surgery, call today, 972-499-5457. I've always believed that trust is one of the greatest compliments someone can receive. When our clients trust our team to handle one of their largest financial decisions they'll ever make, we take that very seriously. Having been in the business for over 36 years, I know that trust does not come easily, it has to be earned. Our team is committed to providing the best real estate service possible with the ultimate goal of having a seamless transaction and as little stress as possible. Let us show you why we are the best in the business. The Jennifer Sheehan Show is about real people with real stories of redemption, miracles, pain, overcoming, and struggles. They're sharing their stories to inspire you and give you hope. We would love for you to partner with us and support us. The Jennifer Sheehan Show is now a 501c3. You can support us by going to thejennifersheehanshow.com and hitting the button donate. Thank you so much for your support. Welcome back to The Jennifer Sheehan Show. So June Hunt has a book out called How to Forgive When You Don't Feel Like It. So June, you didn't feel like forgiving your father. No, why? Right? He did, he did not ask forgiveness. Uh, and it's, it's hard when you see injustice and you hear cruel words and um, minimally uh, at, at times there would well, I was beaten one time, but I was just literally confronting him about these women. And um, I just uh, couldn't stand it. Uh, and he said, I'm not a Christian. I don't have to go by Christian ethics. Um, okay. And so he said, Christianity's a crutch. And so, you know, it, it really, uh, so forgiveness at the time uh, would not even resonate with my thinking because I'm logical, I'm rational. Uh, I'm math. Uh, math makes sense to me, not to a, a number of people, but it makes sense to me. But the key was learning that my concept of forgiveness was wrong. Um, I found that the word, uh, doing word studies, forgiveness means release uh, or dismiss. It's like dismissing a debt. Uh, if you loaned money to someone and then that person was in a horrible car crash, couldn't pay back the money. You might want to say, 
I'm dismissing the debt. You do not have to pay me back. Right. And or it's releasing resentment, releasing uh, the the concept of you owe me, uh, you have to pay me uh, back in the way I think you should be treating me. Um, I, I learned a great deal about forgiveness, and so um, I, it, in fact, my mindset, of course, about um, forgiveness had to do with it's letting them off the hook. Is and, that why we have a hook right here? Well, you know, you mentioned Girl, something. what are we going to do with this hook? Well, <laughs> I brought it because you mentioned your mom a few minutes ago, and you did not hear her ask forgiveness of you. I mean, you know what that's like. Right. So I'm going to do this. Okay, here we are. I'm putting this around your neck. I Don't a, hurt me, June. Now I'll put, I'll put a <laughs> burlap bag, and I want you to grab it real tight. Okay. Real tight. Okay. okay. So I've tell, been working out. I'm strong. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Now, again, my concept was if, you, if you're not forgiving, um, that's appropriate because there's no heart repentance, nothing like that. And uh, so for you, I, would, I just want to hear, when you think about the most painful person in your life, the most painful, what was done to you? Mentally and physically abused by my mother. Mentally and physically? Yes. That's huge. That's mentally, physically. Whole, you can pick the little or one. Tight, real tight, real tight, <laughs> okay. Okay, 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 what else? Wow, that's already getting heavy. Um, disowned by my father. Oh, ouch, that, that has to be double, okay. Oh dear. Okay, what else? Um, oh my goodness. What, 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 how did you feel regarding your mom? What, unloved, what you unwanted, mm. left out. Unloved, unwanted, left out. Unworthy. Mm. Are you going to put all those rocks in here? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, I'm great. Nothing okay. else is wrong with me. <laughs> okay, now tell me, just with this weight. It's really heavy. Yeah. Okay, what would happen if you carried this around for the rest of your life, literally hooked to you? Wow. I don't think I could. Could you it run? It would be a major burden. Yeah, could you run? No. Um, what about your posture? If you... if. If forever. Well, you can see it now. It's not like... <laughs> yeah. yeah, okay. Posture so down. It, it, and you know, God did not create you, Jennifer, to carry this kind of weight. That's right. why he said, release, forgive. So you have a choice. You can literally release all of that pain to the Lord. And then you have a choice. Right. You can choose to release your offender, your offender's, your mom, your dad, you could release them to the Lord. Literally, it's not letting them off the hook. You are taking them off of your hook, right. putting them onto God's hook because he says, vengeance is mine, I will repay. So instead of you causing the repayment, which really doesn't do it, it doesn't, it doesn't really work, does it? No. Okay. So. It would be, I would ask, would you be willing to release all of this pain into the hands of the Lord? Absolutely, because it's really heavy. Yeah, okay, <laughs> okay, let's, let's try to take it off. Uh, off okay. the hook? Well, well, I'll tell you, let's just do, let's release the whole hook. Oh, good, and, I'm free, woohoo! Oh, okay, <laughs> now we can let go. See, it's wow. heavy, it is heavy. Yes. Yeah. So imagine, imagine if you carried for the rest of your life 100 pounds, right? 150 pounds, again, God gives you freedom, the freedom of forgiveness when you release those who have offended you into his hands and literally you are no longer having unforgiveness toward your offender. I love that and I love how you explained that and wow, mm -hmm. only God can carry that. That's a lot mm -hmm. of weight. Mm -hmm. And that sets you at a point of literally realizing that this is, uh, in fact, we, okay, I had to go to my father and ask forgiveness for, number one, I did not ever thank him for books for school, uh, roof over the head, food on the table, because you see, I said to somebody, well, 
Uh, my father was 98% wrong. I was just 2% wrong. And the response was, well, then you are responsible for your 2%. So that's why I had to go to him and first ask forgiveness of right. him. And it stunned him. Right. And I did. I think that set the stage for a later respect and literally right. um, opportunity for a so changed then life. So the great Billy Graham witnessed your father and he did not pray to receive Christ as his Savior. But six months before your father died, he prayed with you to receive Jesus Christ as his Lord and Savior. He's saved and he's in heaven now. Based on the authority. And that <laughs> makes it all worth it. Yes, it does. You know, it makes yes. it all worth it. Thank you so much for coming on my show and sharing. My sister in Christ, I'm blessed to have you in my life. Thank you, my joy, Thank my you. sincere joy. When we come back in our next segment, we'll also talk about how you two can be saved. Today's extraordinary feat, Chris climbs stairs. This may look easy, but with severe back pain, it's impossible. Dr. Stephen Courtney and his team at Advanced Spine Center offer exceptional orthopedic care for neck and back pain. For more information on the latest advancements in minimally invasive spine surgery, call today 972-499-5457. Imagine a global movement of people coming together to feed the hungry, to serve the poor, to celebrate. That day is coming. I have always believed that trust is one of the greatest compliments someone can receive. When our clients trust our team to handle one of their largest financial decisions they'll ever make, we take that very seriously. Having been in the business for over 36 years, I know that trust does not come easily, it has to be earned. Our team is committed to providing the best real estate service possible with the ultimate goal of having a seamless transaction and as little stress as possible. Let us show you why we are the best in the business. Welcome back to the Jennifer Sheehan Show. You too can be forgiven and saved. Pray with me. Jesus, I know you died on the cross for my sin. You rose on the third day. Please forgive me for my sin. I receive you as my Lord and Savior. It's in Jesus' name I pray, amen. Join us next week for an amazing story on hope. Thank you.